Ultrasound is an imaging modality that utilizes sound frequencies emitted and received by a transducer or probe to produce an image based on components of tissue with differing acoustic properties. It is widely used throughout the medical field because of its versatility, availability, non-invasiveness, and relatively inexpensive nature. The modality enjoys high patient acceptance and a lack of medical contraindications. Ultrasound has gained increased popularity in the field of orthopedic surgery in recent years. However, its use and techniques are not a routine part of the training most orthopedists receive. The purpose of this video is to serve as a beginner's guide to shoulder ultrasonography for the orthopedist wishing to incorporate this imaging modality into the office. The history of ultrasonography dates back to the 1980s, during which single-frequency mechanical sector scanners were common. Throughout the 1990s and early 2000s, single-frequency linear array transducers dominated the marketplace. At present, with improved technological advances, high-frequency linear array transducers with broad bandwidth frequency capability from 5 to 13 megahertz are the standard. There are a variety of ultrasound machines and manufacturers on the market, but all have similar features and key components. Most of the units are compact in size. They are portable and designed like laptop computers. The keyboard is very user-friendly and has multiple functional input keys. A variety of transducers or probes can be paired with each machine depending on which anatomical region is being imaged. Optional foot pedals allow the user to perform scans without manual input. Training courses are limited and not readily available. They're typically driven by the device manufacturer and offered only a few times per year. They can also be costly and time-consuming to attend. There are multiple benefits of office-based ultrasound imaging. It's non-invasive and can help you quickly confirm your office diagnosis. It emits no radiation and has no contraindications. It also can help improve the accuracy of office-based procedures such as injections. Finally, it improves patient care and helps foster the doctor-patient relationship. Ultrasound can be easily integrated into the physical examination of a patient in the office. The patient should wear a gown in a way that allows circumferential exposure of the shoulder. The patient should be seated, preferably on a swivel or rolling stool, to allow for easy position changes. The ultrasound unit is positioned adjacent to the patient and at arm's length so that it can be easily referenced by the physician during the exam. The physician is seated just anterior and lateral to the patient to allow visualization of both the examination site and the ultrasound monitor. The ultrasound examination of the shoulder follows a standard sequence with still pictures and dynamic video being recorded. The ultrasound exam consists of imaging five key components, the biceps tendon, the subscapularis, the acromioclavicular joint, the infraspinatus, and the supraspinatus. These structures are imaged in different planes to provide a detailed and accurate assessment of each anatomic structure. To image the biceps tendon in the bicipital groove, the examiner is positioned anterior and lateral to the patient. The ultrasound unit is positioned in front of the physician so that it can easily be referenced during the examination. The patient is seated on a swivel stool and the arm is positioned at the side with the forearm in full supination. The exam begins with the probe at the location of the bicipital groove. The picture shown on the right is demonstrating the desired image to be captured. LT is the lesser tuberosity, GT is the greater tuberosity. Circled in red is the biceps tendon, and above is the deltoid muscle. The following video will demonstrate the appropriate technique. This video will demonstrate imaging the biceps tendon in the transverse plane. The patient is seated with the arm at their side, the elbow flexed, and forearm supinated. The examiner positions the probe at the level of the bicipital groove. The probe is grasped between the thumb and index finger to allow the other fingers to contact the shoulder. This is done to steady the image. The probe can then be moved inferiorly and superiorly to image the biceps within the bicipital groove. The image obtained should clearly show the biceps tendon sitting directly between the greater and lesser tuberosities. The biceps tendon is also imaged in the longitudinal plane. 
This is performed by simply a 90 degree rotation of the examiner's probe as seen in the picture on the left. This produces a longitudinal image of the biceps tendon. The biceps tendon, as demarcated by the red arrow, sits clearly between the humerus and the deltoid muscle. The following video will demonstrate the appropriate technique. To image the biceps in the longitudinal plane, the probe is rotated 90 degrees. This produces a longitudinal view of the biceps tendon as it lays in the bicipital groove. The probe is kept at the level of the bicipital groove and is steadied with contact of the middle, ring, and small fingers to the shoulder. The image obtained should clearly demonstrate the biceps tendon between the humerus and overlying deltoid muscle. The next structure to image is the subscapularis tendon, which is seen here in the longitudinal plane. To image this structure, the patient again is seated with the arm at the side. In order to view the subscapularis tendon, the patient's arm is externally rotated. The position of the probe is at the level of the bicipital groove. The subscapularis tendon is demarcated by the red arrow and is seen inserting on the lesser tuberosity. The overlying deltoid muscle can also be seen. The following video will demonstrate the appropriate technique. This video will demonstrate imaging of the subscapularis tendon in the longitudinal plane. In order to image the subscapularis tendon, the probe is positioned at the level of the bicipital groove. The patient is seated with the elbow flexed and forearm supinated. In order to image the tendon, the arm is slightly externally rotated. This brings the tendon into view. This close-up view again demonstrates the important concept of using the middle, ring, and small fingers to steady the probe to obtain the appropriate image. The biceps tendon is the circular structure located between the greater and lesser tuberosities. External rotation of the arm then brings the subscapularis tendon into full view as seen here. The subscapularis tendon is also imaged in the transverse plane as seen in the picture on the right demarcated by the red arrow. The following video will demonstrate the appropriate technique. In order to image the subscapularis tendon in the transverse plane, the probe is simply rotated 90 degrees. This close-up video shows how the probe can easily be transitioned from one image plane to the other with a simple turn of the wrist. The probe can then be moved laterally and back medially in order to image the entire subscapularis tendon. The AC joint is the next structure to be imaged. This is done in the coronal plane. You can see here the patient is positioned with the arm at the side, again with the elbow flexed and forearm fully supinated. Be sure to apply an adequate amount of ultrasound gel to the probe prior to obtaining the image. The probe is held directly above the AC joint to produce the image seen on the right. The AC joint is demarcated by the red arrow. The infraspinatus tendon is the next structure to be imaged. This is done in the longitudinal plane. To image the infraspinatus tendon, the patient is rotated slightly on the swivel stool to allow access to the posterior lateral aspect of the shoulder. The image obtained should be similar to the one on the right-hand side of the screen. The infraspinatus is demarcated by the red arrow. To image the infraspinatus tendon in the longitudinal plane, again, the patient is rotated slightly on the swivel stool to allow access to the posterior lateral aspect of the shoulder. The patient's arm is positioned across the chest and the probe is again positioned just slightly posterior and lateral to the shoulder. The infraspinatus is then imaged in the transverse plane. Again, this is done with just a slight rotation of the patient on the swivel stool and a 90 degree orientation of the probe. This will produce the image seen on the right hand side of the screen. The infraspinatus is demarcated by the red arrow. A tear would be recognized as a dark or hypoechoic region within the tendon substance both partial and full thickness tears can be detected. The next structure to be imaged is the supraspinatus tendon. This is done in the longitudinal plane. To image the supraspinatus tendon, the patient's arm and shoulder must be slightly extended and internally rotated to bring the supraspinatus tendon out from underneath the acromion. The probe is positioned just anterior and lateral to the acromion in line with the supraspinatus tendon fibers. The image produced should be similar to the one on the right. 
you can see the supraspinatus tendon demarcated with the arrow in red. GT is the greater tuberosity. You can see the supraspinatus tendon coming over the humeral head and inserting on the greater tuberosity. The following video will demonstrate the appropriate technique. To image the supraspinatus tendon in the longitudinal plane, the patient's arm is taken off the shoulder and placed behind the back to allow extension and internal rotation of the shoulder. The probe is positioned on the anterior aspect of the shoulder just slightly lateral to the acromion so that it is in line with the fibers of the supraspinatus tendon. The image produced should clearly show the supraspinatus tendon inserting on the greater tuberosity. The supraspinatus tendon is also imaged in the transverse plane. This is done with a simple 90 degree rotation of the probe. The patient is seated in the same position with the arm and shoulder extended and internally rotated. The supraspinatus tendon is demarcated by the red arrow. Ultrasound can also be used to test dynamically for impingement. The probe is placed on the lateral aspect of the acromion. The examiner can then grasp the patient's arm at the wrist and abduct in order to demonstrate the rotator cuff gliding underneath the acromion. This close-up view again shows abduction and adduction of the shoulder. On the ultrasound view, we can see the supraspinatus tendon gliding underneath the acromion. Office-based ultrasonography can provide a rapid, accurate assessment of rotator cuff integrity. A recent study by Iannotti and colleagues correlated ultrasound images with results of MRI and operative findings in 98 patients. Ultrasonography led to the correct diagnosis in 37 of 42 shoulders with full thickness rotator cuff tears. Similarly, in a study of 68 patients by Cullen and colleagues, ultrasound showed a sensitivity of 89% and a specificity of 100% for full thickness tears, and a sensitivity of 79% and a specificity of 94% partial thickness tears. However, specialized orthopedic surgeons with limited ultrasound experience may be less accurate in diagnosing rotator cuff pathology than what is reported in previous studies. A recent prospective study was performed at our institution to examine the diagnostic accuracy of two independent orthopedists performing office-based ultrasonography of the shoulder. The orthopedist, who had no prior experience with ultrasound, attended a four-hour hands-on workshop led by a musculoskeletal radiologist. The orthopedist then began to perform ultrasound exams in the office on patients presenting with symptoms of rotator cuff pathology. The patients were diagnosed as having either an intact cuff, a partial tear, or a full thickness rotator cuff tear. After scanning 70 patients, the results were reviewed and the data generated showed universally lower accuracy rates, sensitivities, and specificities when compared to MRI. Thus, the learning curve may be longer than expected and physicians with limited ultrasound experience should proceed slowly and with caution when implementing this imaging modality into the office setting. In summary, shoulder ultrasonography is a quick, accurate, non-invasive tool that can be used to assess the integrity of the rotator cuff. It can easily be incorporated into the office-based practice and can be used in conjunction with physical examination. Most studies indicate that shoulder ultrasonography is highly accurate with a sensitivity and specificity approaching or equal to that of MRI. However, physicians with limited ultrasound experience should proceed slowly and with caution when implementing this imaging modality into the office setting.